Here we are again with another guide, this time a guide following one of the most important topics, love. Now, first of all, to establish my qualifications, I'm engaged to my longtime girlfriend and have dated people of varied walks of life, and I will guide you down the steps of infatuation to love. Sadly, this is how the old me of yesteryear had written the script. Before I saw my engagement fall apart before my eyes, before I re-entered the dating scene, and before I doubled the number of times I've been broken up with in just two months. Let's just say I've been humbled and feel lost, but it's from this position that I feel like I can empathize with the most people. So I've pulled out this shelved idea, dusted it off, and given it a tune-up. Instead of the glitz and glam of love and relationships, we're going to cover the grits, the hard and maybe not so fun stuff of improving yourself, finding people, and avoiding pain. Self-improvement. Before you can find other people, you must first find yourself. If you don't enjoy your own company, how can you expect someone else to? Pick a category of yourself you want to work on and do it. For me, I chose my weight and personableness. Please pick at least something that can be objectively measured, and then measure it. Seeing the steady progress in my weight gave me a lot of serotonin through the droughts. To keep track, I had an Excel doc and recorded my weight and calories eaten every day, and have lost 70 pounds over the course of two years, which truly gives me happiness to think about. The feeling of self-improvement, it's a drug like nothing else. For personableness, I threw myself into uncomfortable situations, and it forced me to grow. My policy was that if someone asked me to do something, I say yes. I won't say this made me a better person, but it did make me more well-rounded, and ultimately more interesting. I also have been audio journaling most days, and it really helps me process confusing thoughts and emotions. I definitely recommend it. Now, I'm more comfortable in my own skin, and am a person I would enjoy spending time with. That isn't to say I'm perfect, I'm far from it, but just making visible and trackable progress in multiple ways has made me a happier person and more fun to be around. Meeting people. Now we can move on to meeting other people. Go outside and touch the grass. I'm not even joking. You need to leave your house and do things you actually enjoy. Find other people who enjoy these things too, whether through Facebook, coworkers, or friends. It doesn't even really matter if there are girls or guys there. Just go out and have fun. You need to build your network of relationships, of friendships, and find people you connect with conversationally, emotionally, and physically. However, the primary purpose should be searching for people you connect with regardless of gender. It's a bad look and just bad to hit on every girl, and the benefit of connecting with everyone is you meet a lot of potential friends. Now, once you find someone of the gender you fancy, various people will do things in various ways, but in my opinion, you must first be someone's friend, or at least good acquaintance, before you ask them out. Once you know them better, you can ask them out for coffee or some other low commitment activity. Remember to provide an easy way for them to say no, and if they say they're just too busy without providing an alternate time, it's a no. But I personally like this approach, as if they say no, it's fine, and you keep a friend, and if they say yes, you have the chance to explore if there could be something more. Now that you're actually doing a thing together, there's the chance for hurt. So let's get into our last subject, avoiding pain. So, in all relationships, there is a degree of risk, whether romantic or otherwise. I've had friends be super bitter when other friends start spending way more time with their GF and feel abandoned. You need to be properly emotionally invested for the level of relationship, whatever the form. This is a lesson I thought, had thought I knew well. I thought I was adept enough at reading people to realize when they were pulling away and respond accordingly. To be able to pull my emotions out before the inevitable crash, thus negating the hurt and damage. This worked mostly well for my second most recent breakup. And just to be clear, we weren't dating, we were just going on dates. A big difference, uh, but anyway, I realized on the second date that there's no romantic feeling. It felt just like hiking with a friend. This caused me to freak out a bit, but I was able to use this to shield myself from the future pain when the end eventually came. I honestly felt sadness, but mostly relief, because it's not fun to be in a doomed situation, and I appreciated it that she ended it when and how she did. I hadn't been going on dates with other people since ending my engagement, but this was the first time that someone ended things with me, and while sad, it did give me confidence that I could casually date without too much pain. I've always felt like I'm decent at shutting down emotions, and this experience just reinforced my belief. Little did I know how wrong I was. 
Anyway, as part of meeting people and rebuilding my relationship circles, I've been doing a bunch of activities. A girl I know started to show up to almost all of them, and she was fun to talk to and lived an interesting life. After a couple weeks of seeing her regularly, I decided to ask her out to coffee. She said yes. Despite asking, I was honestly a little surprised she acquiesced. We were very different people. As such, I jealously guarded my heart, perhaps more so than with any other relationship I've had. I wonder if that's what doomed it. Anyway, a couple weeks later, we go on a date, and she opens up about what issues she's going through, and I feel like I do the same. I remember recording in my journal that night, wow, she likes me. She really likes me. Like I couldn't believe that level of emotional vulnerability. Later, she invited me to do stuff with her parents and I think it went well. I felt super safe to pull off my limiters and fully invest myself into the relationship emotionally. <laughs> this, however, was a terrible mistake. Not two days later, she broke it off. I've never so misread the signs before, never been so surprised and crushed. What I had thought was vulnerability was preparation for the end. The sad part is, I can't even be mad. I'd do probably the exact same thing in her shoes. It just sucks. I wish I had come three days earlier. Mayhaps the even sadder thing is I still want to help her with what she's going through. Lastly, I have a friend who is dating a girl who is just dating him for money. She's distant and cold all the time, except when she needs something. This friend knows what's going on, but he's holding out hope to the end. This is not the way to avoid pain, but that's the thing about love and romance. I think I've learned recently. You can gamify it like I do, planning this much investment at certain points and strategizing as much as possible to avoid pain, but you'll still be hurt. Or you can fully throw yourself into a relationship and be hurt too. Ultimately, I don't know which is better, but I do think a general and good rule to follow is don't invest more than the other person into the relationship and don't daydream about the future, or you're just setting yourself up for future pain. Conclusion. All in all, I'm not an expert. I'm not a relationship guru who can fix your problems. I can't even fix mine. However, these are lessons I learned through blood, sweat, and tears. And I hope to help you avoid doing the same. To be honest though, I've never really done well listening to others. So this might as well be shouting into the void. But sometimes, that's exactly what you need. Someday, I hope to be able to release the first version of this video when everything was hunky-dory. But as it is now, I feel like I need to take time to work on myself. Anyway, thank you guys for sticking around to the end. I know it's not my normal content. The second Star Sector video should be released in roughly two weeks. Please comment, subscribe, and smash that like button. Okay guys, see you next time.